So, my name is Adam Hill. Um, thanks for coming. Uh, I'm going to talk about improving the Drupal contributor experience. Um, this is a, a talk that was uh, originally done for DrupalCon Dublin. Um, and uh, it's been put together by uh, the Drupal Community Working Group, of which I'm a member. Um, I've been using Drupal for 10 years and about, I think, three and a half years ago I was approached to become part of the Drupal Community Working Group, uh, mostly through um, my work uh, with a non-profit organization uh, where I was working a lot with conflict resolution and conflict mediation. Um, so uh, who's heard of the Community Working Group? Everyone? Yay! Well, we're off to a good start then. So, the Community Working Group promotes and upholds the Drupal Code of Conduct uh, to maintain a friendly and welcoming, uh, welcoming community for the Drupal project. We do that mostly through uh, a range of activities. Uh, we field incident reports, so we have a, an online form where if something happens in the community that people want support with, uh, a conflict or, uh, or an issue, um, they can log on to the, uh, the, the report page and field the, the, send the report through directly to us. Uh, we meet weekly, um, so every Tuesday afternoon uh, tends to change as the clocks change because we're in multiple different time zones. But uh, we meet weekly and we help to, to, to deal with those incident reports as they come in. Um, sometimes if they come in and they're really urgent then we may find ourselves jumping on it straight away. And, um, you may know about an incident that happened in Munich recently, for example, and that, was, uh, that required instant attention. Um, and again, being in different time zones, we were able to, to deliver that pretty, uh, pretty much uh, throughout. We helped to defuse tense situations, uh, so when those uh, reports come in or if someone uh, uh, gets in touch with us, then we, we try to, to initially defuse those situations and then work with the people involved um, to mediate uh, and arbitrate uh, uh, those, those disputes. We also have, uh, aside from the day-to-day, -day, um, a number of tools that we've developed and resources. Uh, we have our, the, the Code of Conduct itself, of course. We also have a conflict resolution policy uh, and process. And we've, over the years, introduced a, a number of other processes to try and help um, diffuse difficult situations. We uh, finally also do the Aaron Wimborne Award, um, which is uh, an award for people who, who go the extra mile within the community, and that's, uh, that's um, uh, awarded yearly um, at the American uh, DrupalCon, the US DrupalCon. So that's a little bit about uh, who we are, why we're here. So in, um, uh, um, in the run-up to developing Drupal 8, we noticed the, uh, the, there was a lot, an increase in, in incident reports that were coming through to us. Uh, we find that there was a lot of technical disagreements that were turning into often personal attacks. And we wanted to understand why that was, other than just the fact that it was a long process, as we all know. Um, but there was a lot of people lashing out at each other, whether it was in issue queues, sometimes at events, in ver various different uh, areas of the Drupal community. And there was a frustration with the amount of time it took to review patches, project applications, um, and the likes. So what did this mean? This meant that, that there was a real decline in contributor morale. There was a real, uh, uh, it wasn't until the kind of Drupal 8 parties started kicking off that, uh, that there was actually really a difficult feeling in the community. Um, there was a decline in productivity. Things were slowing down instead of you know, speeding up towards the deadline. We had people leaving the project, sadly. Uh, and we had people choosing not to, to join the project in the first place because they were seeing this, uh, th these issues. Um, and this was, this was mostly observed through, uh, through the, the, the issue queues but, uh, and various other places and the incident reports. But it was also, as we spoke to people, it was something that really became uh, clear that we wanted to see if there was a way that we could address the, the issues and, and, and make sure that it didn't happen again for, for moving into Drupal 9. Uh, it's might, maybe a bit, I don't know how well you can see those items there. I'll re run through them for you. But uh, this actually came out of Dries's, um Jesus' survey in 2014 about the, the state of Drupal. Um, this had two and a, uh, 2,900 uh, respondents, which is considerably more than the, the survey that we, we've done as part of this process. Um, but the top one there is complex issue queues, processes, and slow consensus building. Um, bugs and patches that, that uh, don't get reviewed or fixed fast enough. Uh, size of the code base, complexity of architecture. Um, I don't know where to start contributing. So, you know, it's a frustration about the time that things take 
um, and, and how easy it is to actually access uh, uh, the community and, and contribute to the community. So contributing to Drupal can be slow, complex and time consuming and many people don't have the time or the patience to do it. This was the overriding um, kind of uh, outcome that we, that we discovered and, 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 and wanted to do something about. This is um, uh, something that, uh, that uh, also came out of Dries' uh, uh, work and, and the development of the Drupal.org personas in 2014. And it just gives you a, an idea um, uh, of how the current uh, distribution of the Drupal community is. You've got very small master at the top uh, and then experts and skills and, and it comes down a very sharp uh, uh, um, uh, pyramid format. And this on the right is more how we'd like it to be. So we've got more people moving up the scale up into the master area. There's various reasons as to why that, uh, that, that area is so small. Most of them we, we, we've mentioned already. Um, but uh, yeah, the, the, what we found is as you get further up, people start to drop off um, faster and faster. Just to mention this is a, if you've got any questions or anything you want to put forward, obviously we'll have plenty of time for questions at the end. But if you do want to ask anything while we go through, just shout out. Yeah, I mean, it, it, it's a, it, it, this, isn't a ma this hasn't come out of specific statistics, so yeah, it's much more self-defining. Um, it was something that came out of the personas that it, it and, and also if you look at the, the, the statistics on Drupal.org in terms of contribution, you tend to find there's a very small number of people doing the vast majority of the work. Um, and I don't think that's only because of time available and things, but some of the things we'll go into in a minute, but also just because of the fact that, uh, that well, even with masters, you, you have some people who contribute their entire time because they're paid to do it, for example. You know? So it's a, um, it, it's a pattern rather than a, than, a, than a science, if you see what I mean. But um, uh, it, it's definitely one that's seen continue. And I think that, you know, as I say, that the people who tend to, or who visibly leave the community would generally be in those top two areas. Um, and a, a lot of that, we think, is to do with burnout and to do with um, uh, how they're feeling about the project, let's say, rather than something about the code, as it were. Um, but there's more, more statistics to back that up as we go along. So, uh, what can we as a community do to help to, experience, uh, to improve the experience of contributing for, to Drupal for everyone? Um, there's no quick fixes here. I've, we haven't got the magic bullet, and we're absolutely open to ideas and what have you, but uh, we'll go through some of the information that we uh, um, did. So we looked at another survey, because we love surveys. Um, but we also uh, reached out to a lot of people, so when we did the survey, survey we, we, very, we, we targeted Drupal 8 core developers, uh, 8 core and contrib developers, sorry, and uh, um, asked people if they would be willing to, to speak to us as well, and we did a, a, a large number of interviews following the the, the survey, so it's not just uh, uh, data from a survey, but also discussion. This is, uh, we had 109 responses. As I say, this was kind of September, it was um, around DrupalCon uh, New Orleans, um, and for about two months after that, we had the survey open. We got 100, uh, 109 responses. The gender breakdown, 86% uh, male, 10% um, female. In terms of countries represented, uh, I've got the figures here actually, it wasn't entirely representative of the Drupal community, so, or at least in terms of Drupal.org data. Um, in the survey, there was 39% from the US, while the Drupal.org uh, analytics are closer to 21%. Um, and 6% were from India, while on Drupal.org, it's around 12% of the entire Drupal.org is India. So uh, it's not entirely representative, but, uh, but it was a decent, decent snapshot. And again, it was, it was people from those uh, from, uh, from who were yeah, generally... Um, uh, contributing uh, heavily. How long have you been contributing to the Drupal project? So over half the people who we spoke to uh, on the survey have been contributing to Drupal for over five years. So it was a, a, you know, a lot of long-term uh, contributors on there. Um, very few in, in less than a year. And, and one of the things that we're wary of is that if, again, it was a very small um, uh, cross-section, but if this is representative of the community, um, then it's a little bit worrying how small a, a amount of kind of new contributors that there actually are. Um, and some of the questions have to be, why aren't those people, uh, uh, why isn't there more of those people joining? 
How many hours per week do you spend contributing to the Drupal project on, on, on average? There's, there's some, uh, some interesting stats there, but more than half of the respondents spend less than four hours a week contributing to Drupal. Uh, but then you have 28.5% uh, that are spending five to ten hours a week. Now, when you bear in mind this is most often on top of the day-to-day, -day, um, that, that's a considerable amount. And then you've got the, the small percentages of 21 to 40 and, and, and more than 40 hours. And obviously, as we said, most of those people are probably people who are being paid effectively to spend that 40 hours a week uh, um, doing it, which not many companies do at this stage. How did you contribute to Drupal 8? So again, you might not be able to read those very well. The top one there is, I helped write code for a contributed module or a theme. And the second one is, I helped write code for, for Drupal Core. Um, so obviously, the two biggest is, is writing code. Um, I helped uh, provide Drupal community support. I helped write or edit Drupal documentation. I helped uh, with Drupal information architecture design and or UX, and I did not contribute in Drupal, uh, to Drupal 8 in any way. Um, so there's a, a decent range of, of, of contributors there. Um, and the Drupal community support uh, aspect we're talking about there in terms of project management, organizing sprints, different events, camps, that kind of thing. Um, so it's a, a decent spread of the different types of contribution that people do um, for Drupal 8. So this is where we get into the, the meat of, of what people fed back and you can see that 40% um, of people felt like they experienced burnout during the development of, of Drupal 8. And that's a huge amount, I mean it's nearly half the amount of people are, 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 are feeling, experiencing burnout during the process. So there's something, something that needs to be addressed there. Um, I've got a few quotes here. Um, Slow progress, bike shedding, feeling over my head. Some of these you might recognize. <laughs> They're not attributed to people, but uh, uh, I'm sure many people will have, will have felt them. Lots to do before deadlines, contributing on top of a full working day. Um, development cycle is way too long. There's always more to do and no defined endpoint. Lack of clear goals, very complex code base, uncertain, flexible deadlines, e.g. feature freeze. And difficult to move large patches forward, very hard to find qualified reviewers and collaborators. You can see that the feedback we were getting was very consistent with, with what we kind of already uh, knew from the other uh, um, um, surveys. Very difficult to get patches reviewed, inconsistent messages about deadlines and policies and inconsistent application of policies. It feels like wherever the rules are, they only apply to some people or some patches. And those, those were representative of the, the, the large range of, of responses that we got. So during the Drupal 8 development cycle, did you experience or observe conflict in the Drupal issue queues, IRC, etc.? And this is even bigger, so this is 60% of people that said that they've observed conflict. Uh, conflict's a natural thing in, in, a, in, a, um, you know, in a community such as uh, ours, particularly when the main method of communication is, is text-based. Um, but again, it's, a, it's, a, it's relatively alarming um, uh, scale. Um, when we spoke to those 40%, um, uh, most people felt that it was, uh, uh, that, that it was a conflict uh, side of things that was actually leading to the burnout. So that 60% of people who are experiencing the, the, the conflict were also very reflective of the 40% that were, that were burning out. And do you feel you're able to get receive non-technical support from others during the Drupal 8 development cycle? So there was 72.5% uh, that said yes. Most of the things that we looked at so far are relatively... Uh, um, negative, but over three quarters of people said that they were able to receive non-technical support from others, um, mostly from other contributors in the issue queues, uh, from IRC and in-person events. Uh, there was a small number of people who, who, who said that it was due to uh, that they got support from their work colleagues or by uh, from family or friends. So there's conflict, but there's people around to support in that conflict as well. That's uh, one of the slightly more positive uh, uh, aspects of, of the, what we did. Do you feel that there's any non-technical barriers to communication in the Drupal contributor community? It's around 50% of people said yes. And 48.6% of people said no. 
We'll come on to some of my uh, recommendations soon that we've come up with to, to hopefully, uh, or we've worked on with other people to hopefully deal with some of these uh, issues. So it's not all misery and gloom. Um, but yeah, 50% uh, of people saying that, they're, that they're, um, there are non-technical barriers to, to communicating. So some more uh, quotes that came from people. It feels like there's superstars and then there's everyone else. This is, this is quite a um, uh, common thing that comes out. And again, I think it's to do a lot with that pyramid. You know, you've got your small number of people at the top and, the, and they're considered to be the superstars. Uh, although I think a lot of the time that's perception rather than reality. Um, and it's hard to feel encouraged to help out with the bigger initiatives and development. Mostly perception. The perception of people working on core are better, better than or more important than others. Um, or that they're treated differently than other contributors. Most of our communication is text-based and not real-time. For many contributors, it's non-native language. I think this is one that came up quite a lot as well, particularly from people who, who, who English wasn't their main uh, native language. Um, that the, the text-based and, and, and not to having English as your first language makes it very, very difficult to, to communicate in a productive way. So this leads to a lot of possibility for a, a misunderstanding. Documentation is hard to discover. I think we all know that's improving, but it's, uh, it's still an issue. <coughs> so, do you feel that the experience of contributing to Drupal <coughs> could be improved by organizational change? So there's an overwhelming response there of over 60%. That say with some organizational change, we could improve that, uh, that process. Um, some examples. More leadership from the top, not necessarily a dictator. It's controversial, but ideas vetted early at the top then worked out by the community as a whole. Empowerment of initiative leads to make decisions in order to move work forward. Uh, we need more transparency, and it's really grown well beyond this idea of benevolent leader making the hard calls. I'm not sure how to change that, but it has to include more open democracy and some new blood. A mentor should have a more important presence in the community. The process to approve sandbox projects as full projects needs to be much leaner. I don't think there's anyone who would disagree with that. Uh, it's too difficult to have a project approved. So here's, a, here's another bit of slightly good news. How likely are you to contribute to the future of, uh, versions of Drupal based on your experience contributing through Drupal 8? So, uh, as I say, we've been spending most of the, the, this uh, PowerPoint talking about uh, the misery, um, but there is a silver lining in the fact that over three quarters of the people um, said that they were very, uh, they would be extremely likely to contribute to future versions of Drupal based on their experience contributing to Drupal 8. So again, while while you know the output is, while there's a lot of negative things going on, there's still a very uh, strong feeling of community uh, and, and a very strong feeling of loyalty to the project. What's the number one technical change that you feel should be made to improve the Drupal contributor experience? So this was an open question, hence why there's no graph there. Um, so we've got a few of the feedbacks. Lower entry barrier by making it easier to contribute modules. Fixed project application review process. Let's spot a theme going on here. Great acknowledgement of non-code contributions, which is, you know, there, there is already work going on in a number of these, as, as I'm sure you'll, you'll know, but uh, we need to improve our tools for contrib, or at least at the GitHub level. More detailed roadmaps, so potential contributors can see where they can jump in and out of the coming an issue queue. And a feminist new world order. There you go. <laughs> So we took all this information, we've, we've processed it, we, we've taken on, uh, we've spoken with a, a, a wide range of people, as I said, after the, the, the survey, um, and we've come up with a few recommendations, but as I said before, uh, we're very, very keen on, on other ideas and other contributions that people want to make in terms of how we can uh, help with this issue. Um, because it's a big one, you know, it's a big one in terms of the um, people leaving the community, it's a big one in terms of people coming into the community, and, uh, uh, yeah, we're, we're very open to how, whether it be the CWG <coughs> or through, through different uh, um, parts of the community, we can, we can improve these things. But there's a few recommendations from, from our side.
streamline the review process. I think this is a kind of a no-brainer, but not the easiest thing to do in the world. But streamline the review process um, by an, uh, empowering and enabling more people to conduct reviews. So there's lots of people, um, sorry, lots of people developing modules that just aren't getting through, and that's just creating a massive amount of, of uh, frustration. Um, and pretty much everyone we've spoken to about this are on board with it. Uh, the DA and, and various others are doing work on this as we speak um, to make the, the process more transparent, to avoid appearance of favoritism, um, to make it easier for reviewers to find unreviewed projects, and to make it easier for reviewers to indicate their approval. We, we've found examples, I think, where it was sometimes taking up to uh, potentially over a year for for modules to get pushed through. And that's, you know, if you're looking for new contributors and you're looking for the community to grow, that's not, it's not welcoming and it's not useful. Um, so, so, as I say, our understanding is that people are really on board with this. And it's outside of the CWG's ability to make this happen, but this has been passed on to, the, to those that can. Uh, and obviously the more that it's uh, supported and welcomed from the community, the more uh, likely it is to happen. Improving communication. So, I don't think this, or oh, it might just have started, but I don't think the Slack, yeah, the Slack channel had maybe just started when we, when we did this. Um, but, but not relying so heavily on IRC, especially for new contributors. Um, IRC for the CWG is a, is a, is a breeding ground for, for, um, for both, both ends of the, of the community. You know, you have some of the best help that goes on, some of the most kind of uh, um, uh, active troubleshooting with new members uh, who come to the community. But you also have people coming in there and just being turned off straight away by some of the, whether it's banter or it's, it's, uh, it's just people too busy to be able to help with things. Um, so IRC's uh, been brought time and time again. Um, mixing asynchronous and real-time channels. Yeah, sorry. I'm just going to seem appropriate to interject. Um, sure. So one of the things I think um, is that there's a lot of people who are Joining the channels, mm -hmm. 200 would be a normal set. Yeah. And yet, apparently, you know, and you, you can see the list, and then apparently nobody does it. Mm -hmm. and, I, and I think, you know, if we could just get the message up, unless you intend to do something, don't actually do it. You know, don't sit there doing nothing. Or something like that. But, you know, the appearance of two or three hundred people in a channel, and when somebody comes in and says, oh, can you send one help, and no one, you know, big silence, it's, it's really off-putting, I think. Yeah, no, it's interesting you mention it, and I think that also what then happens um, when we've spoken to some of the um, more prolific contributors, what you then find is that when people think that the general room isn't listening, they start directly targeting and pinging the, the, the top contributors. And so they find they're constantly getting hit with the questions directly right. as well. So, I mean, in that sense, it would make sense. I, I'm not sure how to deal with that because obviously part of the value of IRC for the people who are using it is to be there available when people need them rather than just there for... And I'm not sure... I, I, I don't use it enough, but I'm not sure how the... If there's going to be this kind of almost transition from IRC. To, I think most people... Mm -hmm. Uh, no, I think there's a lot of people who just won't make that transition from IRC to Slack. I think Slack is a slightly better format because of the fact there's more ability to, to f there's more feedback mechanisms and things like that that make it a little bit better. Um, but either way, it's still text-based communication, and, and, and effectively our, our main recommendation is with, uh, for that is to do more face-to-face uh, -face and voice-to-voice -voice, uh, communication. We've got that next in terms of the mixing the, the real-time channels um, with, uh, with also, you know, having regular hangouts, having regular mm -hmm. meetings. Um, and I think if you look at most of the initiatives and the initiative leads these days, that's what they've started to do more of. And using the IRCs and the slacks is just kind of the, the follow-up and the backup uh, um, um, processes. But I definitely think that more, more um, uh, human uh, uh, communication channels is, is, is a is a good way forward. Obviously people only have so much time with Slack or Skype, whatever, you can ping people and then leave it and get off to other things, but um, but yeah, I'm not quite sure how you would deal with that one just on the fact of people be wanting to be contactable by other developers, for example. Uh, it's probably about the rooms themselves. And yeah, the, the I, I think that's a good point. I think that's a good point. Um, I think that's a good point. 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 I think that
I think maybe it's uh, a thing about IRC and, and maybe using Slackers as the normal thing will be actually better. It's the same as Slackers. Yeah. Yeah, I've had on the app channel on on yeah quite often pings you and then there's then there's conflict comes up because like well is that really worthwhile to be able to ping the entire channel? <laughs> it's like yeah. it's it's unending, but yeah. Gladly, that's not the kind I of things. I just want to raise the point that yeah. you know the appearance of you know, you know, like coming into this room, like 200 people here, and then you, you, you stand at the front and say, can anyone help? And everyone's going, and it's like, uh, well, <laughs> that's yeah. not very friendly, is it? Yeah. Yeah, um, so we've got there also understanding and uh, appreciating that English is not everyone's first language. This is a huge one that we deal with in day to day CWG stuff that people put things across and it's considered kind of rude or abrasive or and it's often just that that person doesn't speak very strong uh, you know strong English have strong written English mm. um, so it's a tricky one um, particularly in the real time you know in the slacks in the in the IRCs because um, yeah then it can it, it can yeah feel very abrasive but we need to take that into account it's a global community and we have to uh, we have to uh, uh, um we did that in terms of support for Facebook so we did what they had complaints so they had to report to you know uh, friends reporting to me and I had to review them. yeah and actually it was just a person who was like you know from Vietnam and his English was brilliant yeah he just pitched it with, with the wrong words yeah so I just think that person is if you just edit the post and reword this way, that's yeah. And then it's fine. Yeah. But it's a difficult one. It is. No, it's very difficult. And it, it, it's, uh, it's, um, it, it's also difficult when we've had reports about it. It's a very difficult one to, um, to almost investigate, you know, because you don't, you don't want to make assumptions about someone's level of English before you've actually kind of spent time talking to them. So. Mm. <coughs> We've also got uh, make it easier for newcomers to know where to go to connect with other contributors. I think uh, Drupal.org is, is uh, again, has improved. There's, a, there's regular improvement going on, but in terms of pointing people in the right direction of the places where they can get help, it's still a bit, uh, um, uh, it's still very lax. I don't think, for example, that Stack's mentioned on there yet. Um, you know, it takes a long time for those kind of things to to go in there. So we, we want to make it easier for newcomers to know where to, to connect with other contributors. Even the forum, I don't know if. You've seen the forum discussions going on lately, but um, you know the DA don't have time to invest in the forum. People who manage the forum don't want it to move somewhere else. They want investment in the forum. Some people are talking about taking the forum completely offline and, and, and having something else. And um, it's a, it's a, if that's the scenario and there's a newcomer coming in, then then you know where do you actually point them towards? Because uh, people want to work in different ways. I think, I think <coughs> on that point, it's really important that Drupal community sort themselves out and decide something. Mm -hmm. you know, making not making a decision is worse than making one that the, might the not be optimal. And that's where you get the tricky situation because of the fact that the community may have made a decision of what they want to do, but they need the support of the DA who have yeah. budgetary restrictions in terms of implementing those things. Yeah. So it's a it's a it's a it's a very careful balance. Mm -hmm. But yeah, it's a. Uh, uh, I think that you know the the previous um, slide you know about uh, um, about the process of putting modules through. It's a very similar thing. Uh, everyone wants it to move faster, but it's agreeing on the solution and then implementing it that that, uh, that takes time. Roadmap communication. Um, so creating easy to find summaries uh, of active initiatives in Drupal.org. This is taken also from the fact that some initiatives that that has really been the case. So the multilingual initiative that, that I think everyone will be aware of, that, that Gabor did, there was a very clear um, uh, summary of, uh, summary of the, the um, roadmap on there, and that made it very easy for people to, to duck in and, and, and out of the process. Making it easier for contributors to get involved with initiatives that interest them. Clarifying the roles of initiative leads, so being very, very clear about what an initi initiative lead is there to do. And improving the documentation and, and architectural overviews for future contributors. So that's about the roadmap communication. 
This is a big one for the community working group, and uh, as you can see there, it says community working group focus. This is one over 2017 um, that we'll, we'll be spending a lot of time uh, working on, um, mentorship. And it's time and time again that people have fed back about mentoring. Uh, time and time again we see in, in the context of uh, the wider context of the Drupal community, but also in terms of uh, um, sprints and what have you, camps and, and, and cons, that uh, mentoring really, really works. And uh, So the idea is to move the focus beyond just the camp kind of onboarding people as, uh, as it often happens, but try and, if we're doing mentoring at a camp, let's try and create some longer term um, uh, mentor relationships uh, where we can. Pairing mentors with high potential contributors for long term one-to-one -one mentorships. So also looking at um, targeting um, the people who you could see you could move through uh, the ranks, as if that's what it was, or the, the learning levels. Um, provide more non-code uh, non mentoring opportunities. So pairing up people who are thinking about running a camp with someone who's been running a camp for 10 years and, and, and getting that working. Um, and providing more support and training to, to mentors. So not just doing um, uh, mentoring at events, but actually doing training on how to be um, the best mentors. And we've got a ton of great stories out there about mentoring. Um, it's something that the Drupal community has done well. Um, so let's get those success stories out there and tell people about when it's worked and how it's worked. Um, so we're really keen to, to improve the mentoring process and hopefully give you know, people just coming into the community an opportunity to, um, to, to learn more and have someone to, to handhold them through some of, the, um, some of the process. Leadership training, this is one that's quite close to my heart, but uh, it's another focus of the community working group. It's one that we're hopefully going to be helping uh, to work on. Um, creating a structured program for, for current and emerging leaders in the community. So we really want to to find those people who are in leadership positions, whether kind of self-made or, 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 or not, and uh, uh, get them working together and get them uh, um, developing further. Um, we focus on developing skills like creating pro problem solving, conflict resolution, uh, advocacy and visioning. So we want, to, we want to be taking a lot of what the community working group does and getting that happening throughout the community, not just within our group. Uh, broadening the understanding of the Drupal community, its assets and its challenges, and creating a network of leaders within the Drupal community. So this we plan on doing at the events that happen. We plan on hopefully having a kind of open source training um, package that people can use in their events, but also to run specific events around um, leadership training. Conflict resolution. Um, Creating easy to find resources that people can uh, use to resolve issue without escalation. So if you look at our conflict resolution process, the first step is always to, uh, to, to try and work through the, the issue yourself with the person. The second step is then to involve another community member and then escalate it to the community working group. But uh, you know, conflict resolution is a complex and, and often very difficult process. So um, uh, we're putting together some training uh, materials and resources that can help people to, to, to work through that without having to come to the community working group. Um, providing more conflict resolution sessions and training at Drupal events, that's, that'll hopefully be at Drupal cons um, and again at Drupal camps uh, we, can, we can provide uh, train the trainer kind of process where, where people get the, the training at the cons, go to the camps and can deliver that further to, to community members. <coughs> and promoting a culture of, of, of empathy. Yes. Okay. It's even four minutes. We're almost there. So come for the software, stay for the community. We all know the, the tagline. Um, what we know is that the, the greatest asset we have in the Drupal community is actually, actually the people, not the code. Of course, the code's useful, but um, it, it's the people. And uh, as a community, we, we, we tend to give less attention uh, and value to the non code contributors. But it's those kind of contributions that play a key role in, in enabling the code to, to continue going in the way that it is. So it's really important that we, we try and focus on some of these, uh, these recommendations and make those happen. But we also constantly need to be evaluating the community to see where, um, where the issues are arriving. Um, and there is 
there are issues there. You know, things have improved already, but you can see, you know, with with uh, 40% of, of, of people feeling burnt out, that's, that's you know, it's not good. Um, hopefully, with some of the technical changes that have happened as well, that, you know, the new version uh, uh, set up, that kind of thing. Um, but there's a lot of non-technical things that we can be doing to, to improve the, the health of our wonderful community. This is the, uh, oh, wrong one screen. This is the uh, Twitter accounts of uh, all of the community working group. Uh, there's stuff in the governance section of the website if you want to hear about more about what we what we do day to day. Um, but we are, as I said, uh, we've got maybe three minutes for a question if anyone wants to. But we've got uh, our tweets and, and we're happy to have conversations at any any time with anyone about the ideas that they may have to take this stuff forward. Does anyone have a question? A wider, a wider, yeah. Yeah, because yeah. yeah. and, and, and a lot of this wasn't so much about drawing conclusions as much to get some feedback and input of, as to why those things were, but yeah. Um, my gut feeling is that that kind of thing needs to be going through, effectively needs to be tied into um, the surveys that Drees tends to do quite regularly, and that we need to just have a bit more of a um, I would say a presence within those surveys because they tend to get much higher. Um, as the CWG, we don't have much of a profile. We, we only just got a Twitter handle like in February, uh, in uh, November. So um, I think when Dries does his next surveys, then, then the best thing will be to get some questions into there that are reflective of this kind of stuff. Can I just express um, a frustration? Sure. Um, and obviously, people here have thought about it. They so last six months I've been trying to do some work on C tools and D set. Um, and partly because I just got a bit frustrated with some stuff in the books. I cared about the work getting fixed and but did have a fix that I did. And um, it, it, there's been a kind of perception probably really. Uh, the D7 C-Talks is what the fuck you're like? You know, D8 now, but we've still got several years of D7 support. Um, and lots and lots of companies that seem to be sticking with D7 sites. Mm -hmm. um, so, am I wrong in thinking that supporting D7 is still a good thing to do? I'm, a, I'm probably not the best person to ask on that because I'm not a developer, so, but it, in terms of the process, my understanding would be that you tend to develop for Drupal 8 and then, and then backport that for, for 7. Having said that, in Contrib, then obviously, particularly if it's new features or bug fixes or whatever, then it might not, it might yeah. not be that that, it's, that works. So but CTOs in D8 is a completely different thing. Yeah. There's virtually no point in uh, attempting to backport that because you're I think if people, are, if people are effectively saying there is only a, a certain length of time that, yeah. that this work is going to be useful to people, then, yeah. I mean, that's the reality. But on the flip side, as you say, there's still a certain, certain few years. Yeah, so. I mean, you know, it's, it's a, a length of time, most in years, not months, is, is my point of view. Yeah. But it's tricky because there's lots of people in this issues with lots of different opinions and, and yeah. ways of doing things. So, um, But uh, I would just keep at it and, and yeah, you know, keep contributing. It, it's just the sort of uh, dismissive way that some people are talking about it. It's like, well, what are you doing that for? I mean, you know, it's the, the communication is the real, the the, the really interesting part of all of this is that mm. we all, being such a huge community, we all communicate in different ways, and some people, it's kind of, uh, it could just be busy, it could just be a bad day, it could just be that they're generally rude in their demeanour but <laughs> you know it's uh, um, we, we, d we still want them to be uh, to be around and, and, and involved so yeah it's a, I mean I think it was which slide was it I think uh, promoting a country a culture of empathy I think it's actually I almost downplayed it there but it's quite a huge one which is just trying to uh, remember that other people anything could be happening in other people's lives and mm -hmm. therefore it, you know it's uh, it, it's very hard to uh, to, to it's it would be easy, easy just to not 
worry about it from a personal level and just take it as a um, find someone else to, to work with who wants to help. Does anyone else have any questions? Yeah. Uh, early on you sort of said you deal with tickets coming in, planes coming in. I just wondered the kind of numbers that come in or is that sort of thing that you don't really want to share with? No, no, that's the kind of thing that can share. What I can't talk about is what, what those tickets no, are. But, um, I mean, in terms of incident reports, it, it really um, it, it really bounces around because you've also... I mean, we, we never have more than two or three new ones per week. Uh, and often... And, yeah, often often we won't get one for a month, you know what I mean? So it's... It really... Well, and also the, the scale of the, an incident report could be someone saying, uh, you know, someone's... I don't like how someone's uh, written to me on an issue uh, queue to some level of harassment or something very serious, you know. So the time we could spend on, on issues could be anything from 10 minutes agreeing that we just need to send one of our fairly stock uh, responses back, directing them somewhere else, for example, or it can take weeks. And we, I mean, we've had some, some issues where we're working on them for, for weeks and all spending hours per week doing that, you know. So it's a... It's, uh, we, are, we are working on thinking about growing the group because the fact that for four of us on different time zones, it's quite, um, it's a lot of work. And unfortunately, the amount has grown, so. Um, yeah, no, it's, uh, we, let's say we always have things to do every week, but it's, um, and, and, and that's part of the problem is we don't have a huge amount of time for all this extracurricular, as I'll call it, stuff that we want to do. Um, but, uh, but, but, yeah, with, it, with the growth in the group, then hopefully that will become more a reality. Thank you. Yeah, I was just going to say thank, thanks a lot, and I uh, hope that was helpful. Thank you. Uh, I'm going to be upstairs for the next hour and a half if anyone wants to ask any more questions. Thanks, Tim. Oh wow! Um, I didn't even know that existed. About hundred posts away, right? From all over the world. Mm -hmm. And but what's the name of the group? Sorry, group of support. Okay. Uh, jo uh, join it, and I'll, I'll pick, put you in. Yeah, I'm yeah, looking. Well, we could, I mean, like um, Cyprian and me are the admins. Cyprian and Mancia. Mm -hmm. And um, cheers, Tom. George Hales, Hazelwood and yep. various other people and an Israeli guy called Roy Karen. Right. Who came into Drupal three years ago with no knowledge and now he's not. Roy Karen. Really nice chat. Yeah. That is it's very much what you were so all about.